Anytime you step into the unknown, POI's point of interest gets added. There is a sense of anticipation. This expedition will give us a chance to see this part of the ocean in a way that has never been seen before. Okay, so we calculated the other 50 minutes. We're able to explore a whole new world. A world that lives in darkness. They just need to know if we're going over any hills. A world with creatures we can barely imagine. Roger. Nobody knows what we'll find. Is that you? Yep. Oh. Took my oh, daughter. Is that your daughter? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> she's ever cute. She was so excited about those fish. My name is Alexandra Cousteau, and I'm a senior advisor with Oceana. Oh, that was my daughter's first time seeing dolphins. They were just passing through. You can almost touch them. <laughs> yep. Oceans are the source of life on this planet. In our quest to fish more and more, we've developed technologies that have allowed us to strip the ocean of life. But it doesn't have to be that way. south. And I'm really interested to see the redfish habitat, but it really hasn't been well documented, so I'm Just excited. Here. This expedition is a partnership between Oceana Canada and Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Quite a bit of different habitat, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. We never had the chance yeah. to have some filming there, so we're really curious about the biodiversity yeah. we're yeah. going to find there. And we'll see different species than we saw. <laughs> We started in Quebec City on board the Martha L. Black. A Canadian Coast Guard ship, an icebreaker. Okay. And we headed out to the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Expeditions like these give us the information we need to better determine which parts of the ocean we should be protecting. My grandfather was Jacques Cousteau, an ocean explorer, and he was an ardent defender of this planet. I think my grandfather would be extremely excited about this expedition, to explore places and see them in a way that no one's ever seen them before, to use extraordinary technology. Come out of bypass? Good. Yeah. Go ahead and stow. The Ropos is an underwater robot that will allow us to go down to the seafloor. What's the depth of this site? 315. Roger, thank you collect scientific data, collect samples, and record everything in high definition. Cleaning the windows, having good visibility from our excellent cameras, it's important. Zero, set, zero. Zero, set, zero. So this first location is in the uh, northern Laurentian Channel. Jusqu'à 80. 
Oui. I'm Robert Rangeley, Science Director for Oceana Canada. The Northern Laurentian Channel is very, very productive. We know there's corals down there. We know there's sponges. No one's taken a camera down and looked at what those mean for that whole biodiversity in the area. It's going to be a surprise for all of us. Hey, we're in the water. Woohoo! Yay! Crack that bottle of champagne. Perfect conditions to yeah. see. To, oh, there goes a, a tinafore. Yeah. They're bioluminescent, so you'll see little rings of lights going around them. We're descending to almost 400 meters. The ropos is on its way down. So bizarre. Oh. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. My first reaction to seeing the live feed from the Ropos was just how amazing the footage was. Right off, sea pants and redfish. Yes, it's right there. Redfish. Okay, we're cool. first thing we saw was a this field of sea pens. They're a soft coral. And we saw redfish, they uh, live in this habitat. It's just phenomenal. I mean, this is what we it's wanted to see. <laughs> you see, Luke, let Barry hold that. Luke, you come over and help this guy. Okay, so keep them tight, nice and slow. Nice and slow. Tighter, tight. Sub, power off. There's no this, I got eye. Very good, gentlemen. Can we take a look at these sponges? It was so exciting when we hit that patch of sponges uh, today. We have two rugs with different kind of sponges because they need a, like a substrate to, to be attached to live. We have also a very long sea pen. Oh, wow, yeah. I didn't know it was so long, long when we saw it in the video. It's a very long, sticky sea pen. It's amazing how they can be attached yes, like to mud. In the mud, yeah. Yeah, in the mud. Weird. And we're going to preserve it to do more analysis in the lab. It's really cool. I can't wait to see the results of that. Just take the sea pen. This is very nice. What's interesting for me to watch, but it's the uh, scientists at Canadian Fisheries and Oceans who are specialists on these animals. 16. Uh, they want to understand what's down there to help better manage our oceans. Checking with other colleagues, maybe they have seen this species before. What this science will do is tell us where the species live and how they interact with one another and really characterize what's actually there. We headed down the St. Lawrence to the American Bank. American Bank is located off the Gaspé Peninsula, but not an awful lot's known about that. We know it's an important, valuable area, but we don't know what we're going to see. Wow! <laughs> we need a cod to come. Wow! Right. No, there he is. <laughs> There's a few cod in there, isn't there? I don't think that's the same. We're just blown away. There was. Capelin, and we got one of the best videos I've ever seen of cod coming into those schools of Capelin and munching down on them. So it was amazing. And then we came up this vertical cliff. This is incredible. This is incredible. It was sea and enemies, and it was just like a garden. We even saw what we call a sea potato, which is a long stalked organism with a big bulb on the end of it. Do you want me to hook it in now? Okay. Salut Virginie. So if you want, you can take one of the sponge with your hands. All right. 
So this is a sea potato. Yeah. This uh, species is close uh, to vertebrates. Very of the cool. Stem. I've never seen something like this before. Oh, very cool. This is gorgeous. We only need a little piece of DNA, and then we're going to know more which species it is. They keep a library of all the species collected at the Institut Maurice Montagne. Since this is a large enough sample, we will take a core for a genetic analysis. After the American Bank, we went to the Cape Breton Trough. It's a corridor for whales, leatherback turtles. We really don't know what it looks like. We know it's a trough. It's highly productive. So the Cape Breton Trough is something we've been looking forward to seeing this whole expedition. Oh, look at that tinafore just coming in, <laughs> like an alien. Yeah. <laughs> that was neat. <laughs> wow, it's freaky looking. It is. Oh, what resolution. Look yeah. at that. Wow. Right now, we're going over a mud, somewhat rocky substrate. We're at 112 meters right now. It wouldn't look like much to the non-biologist. A few crabs and sea pens and, uh, and fish. But to a biologist, there's a lot more going on there. You just never know what you're going to see. And uh, it's hard to tear yourself away. <laughs> when we open these boxes, it's again like a moment of discovery. Hi, Jean Viv. Hey, Bob. What's the catch today? Oh, and that's a beautiful we star. We thought the color was so nice, that so, yeah. so, so we took it. Do you know the species? No, yeah. <laughs> just splash me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the species, so yeah. again, we're going to yeah. put that in the lab and try to identify it. Yeah. We have a real big yeah. one sponge, and that. that's going to be easiest to identify. We saw quite a few of these, didn't we, on yeah. the video? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a piece of pottery yeah. you'd have. <laughs> oh, it's really nice. Yeah. We brought some amazing samples, so we're going to have a lot of fun in the DFO lab trying to identify all of that. It's going to take many weeks. That was a really good dive. Yeah, a really good dive. Yeah. It's been a success. There's still a lot of work to do. The Gulf of St. Lawrence is clearly very diverse. A lot to analyze, both from the videotapes and the physical specimens that were brought to the surface. And now we have to look at how best to manage that. Some of that management will certainly include protecting these sensitive areas. I think my grandfather would have loved to be doing what we're doing and seeing what we're seeing and discovering what we're discovering. The more we know about our oceans, the more we can manage our oceans in a way that restores abundance. And I think that that's something that we can all agree on. I now have a better appreciation of what an important place this Gulf of St. Lawrence is. It's been very inspiring.